My guest today is one of the great prog basses of all time. He's a longtime member of Marillion, who have a brand new album coming out on September 23rd called Fear. I'm pleased to welcome Pete Travis. Hey, Pete. Nice to meet you. How are you? Hi, Roy. Where are you now? Are you still on the road? Are you on a break from touring? We're, uh, we're on a break from touring. I've just got back from Verona, and I'm sat in my home studio, actually. I'm in my garden, in my little office. How were the last uh, few shows? Great, actually. All the shows have been really good. We did some touring. We started touring with the album in Germany, and we did uh, a show in the Czech Republic as well. We actually... I say that, we did, I completely forgot, we did Spain as well. We did Barcelona and Madrid. Barcelona was, was the first show. And we, um, we decided to um, uh, play um, New Kings, which is one of the new songs. Right. That, that's the only album, uh, song from the new album that we played on this, this that leg of the tour. And uh, we did Barcelona... Madrid. We did a few shows in in Germany, uh, and then we did some festivals with. Um, we did a couple of festivals with Foreigner, and a festival with Deep Purple, and then we did another festival in Switzerland, and then we had a break and went on holiday. We all had a couple of weeks off, and then we've just got back from that, played Verona, and I'm here uh, talking to you. <laughs> we're, we're kind of tentatively getting ready to go to America. That's what I wanted to ask you about, and uh, that in the new album. And, and uh, yeah. you know, uh, the response you guys still get worldwide, especially in Europe and, and those the, the countries that are over there, uh, from the fans, even to this day, so many years later, are you ever still surprised at how big the band is and how pe so many people still follow the band and come to the band and with the Marillion weekend that you guys do and all everything that the fans support? Ah, oh, it's incredible. We do get great support and we're very lucky for that and we do appreciate that, you know. Um, I think the thing about Marillion is that we've, we've tried to stay current, you know. I suppose we had, we had a... Um, we had a, 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 a point in time, a few, probably a few years ago, where we could have gone one of two ways. We could have either tried to try to stay kind of fresh and current and, and interesting, or we could have become one of those bands that just plays the um, kind of so-called hits or the classic songs or whatever, right. and does the kind of circuits that a lot of those bands do. And... Um, I suppose we've always been far more interested in doing something new and interesting. Whatever, inter you know, if something interests us, then we hope it interests everybody else. And we do have a great following. We do. Um, but I mean, you, I think you have to earn that. We've earned, you know, we've got great faith from our fans. But I think, you know, there's an integrity and there's a there's a sense of us being real. You know, we're very careful to try and keep to our main aims. We want all we want, you know, we want to play music that is exciting and current and new and stay fresh and focused and, 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 and you know, bring an integrity to what we do and not sell out, you know. Keep, keep in mind the kind of core aims we had when we started, I think. <laughs> right. Um, the new album, uh, we'll call it uh, F Everyone and Run. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or uh, Fear for short, I guess, if you're going with that, comes September 23rd. And to, to what you're describing about the band, this is an album that, again, takes risks, uh, might not be what, what everybody expects. You guys really go uh, sort of... Um, I don't know, controversial with the topics and the lyrical content and everything, very political on this sure. one. So, you know, um, you tell me about the album, where the where the idea for it came from, and, and the idea to, uh, to, to tackle some more uh, hard topics on it. Yeah, well, the idea to tackle, I mean, they were there, you know, as, as we were sort of going along with the writing. Um, we spent about three years kind of getting all of this stuff together while we were doing other things as well. We were touring with Sounds That Can't Be Made. We were doing some conventions. We did a couple of South American tours. And while we were sort of busy trying to keep our name 
in the limelight and not because you know you know what it's like if you disappear for, half, <laughs> for six months people just think you're dead you know <laughs> right. it's, it's a very immediate world we live in so you have to kind of stay stay on that and uh, um, um, we, we we found the time in amongst all of that to, to chip away at the writing and come up with ideas and um, so we were very aware of various songs we had when when we when we came to put the whole thing together and well actually when when we when we came to kind of say okay we've got all of these ideas we've got about you know 300 hours of music on a sound on a cloud what are we going to do with it so we all had to make lists we all had to make lists of our favorite things and they could be favorite song ideas they could just be a favorite noise could be anything whatever inspired you you had to, and I made it. We were, and that got whittled down to lists of this, that, and the other things that were more obviously choruses, things that were more obviously verses, things that were just great passages of music. And then things like, like well, that's a great sound, but what do you do with that? You know, it's a sound. Um, and um, and all of these things just got um, got put into the pot, and um, we decided that um, what we were going to do with them. And at that point. Mike said, look, we haven't really sat down and talked about this, but uh, Mike Hunter, who was very quickly becoming the sixth member of the band for this project, said, look, if we're going to do this, you know, we're going to make another album together, we're going to make all this music together. He said, this is your 18th album. I said, none of us are getting any younger. Hmm. And he said, if I'm going to do this with you, and we're going to spend all this time and effort on this, I want it to be real. He said, I want to believe everything. I want to believe every note. I want to believe everything you sing about. And I want it to be real. And um, that kind of hit home, I suppose, and made us all feel, right, okay, we've got to really, you know, this, you know, every album counts, but this one kind of, it, it was it was brought home to us that we've got to, We've got to really make this album count because it could be who knows who knows what we're going to go where right. we're going to go what we're going to do you know where well, some of us are sort of knocking on sixty and there's not that many albums left in us probably so yeah so that 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 kind of gave us that almost in a strange way that empowered us to then look at everything with fresh eyes and and fresh ears and just throw away anything that we didn't think was worth the effort and sometimes you know an idea which is like a good idea but you don't know what you're going to do with it would you know we we, we would spend time working on it and, and and make it into something or it could become part of something but with this whole new idea of everything's got to be believable and and and, and honest and and and, and real, uh, we got you know we whittled it right down to the bare bones of amazing stuff <laughs> luckily you know we had well we do we you know we we throw we we throw away vast amounts of music we really do um, and but we did have some tremendously strong ideas and musical sections and we just set about putting them all together in the right way with the right sentiments and we had various pieces of music with uh, with you know similar lyrics on or, or the same theme for lyrics right and we we you know it was very very obvious where things worked and where things weren't weren't quite as strong still good but you know if if there was a choice between the two which there very clearly was we would we would cut 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 away everything that that we didn't think was which should be on the album well when you listen to it it obviously flows and has a um concise sound to it throughout everything yeah you know everything seems to be long like you're saying it's sort of and and many parts are one song that break into you know different different number of tracks and and uh, yeah that that's type right. of thing. the first single the new kings was that one of the earlier tracks that that helped set the tone or uh, sometimes the single is the is like the last song that was written yeah funnily enough with this album um i guess new kings was evolving New Kings and El Dorado and Leavers actually were evolving f for two or three years, which um, which led us to, um, 
you know, which led us along the path of, of um, where we were lyrically. Because, um, you know, the, 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 the phrase, F everyone and run, comes from how big money um, kind of manipulates people. And, um, yeah, how big money compromises our institutions and governments. And there was a sense that that was going on in England, uh, especially with the bank, you know, the banking crisis around the world. And then the refugee crisis is around the world. And the way that Europe was dealing with that, which was uh, the way England was dealing with that, actually, which is quite shameful. I'm quite ashamed of the way England it was starting to put count the pennies for what we're trying to do before the, the humanitarian. Yeah. And the timing of, probably of, of this coming out with the whole Brexit thing. Yeah, uh, exactly. That, yeah. Well, we did, I, at the time all of this was being written, we didn't realize Britain would leave. I don't think the government left realized Britain would leave either, yeah. which is, which is, <laughs> they just assumed, Oh, well, that's never going to happen. That's right. never going to happen. Let right. these people run with it and hang themselves. And then all of a sudden, oh, bloody hell, the companies, <laughs> the country's voted. Christ, what are we going to do now? And that really is where Britain is at the moment. You know, mm. uh, although I think Theresa May is is um, doing a very good job. Uh, she's a very good politician, actually. And she's been she's ha- she's held she's held high office in in um, in in, in and, and been held in high regard before all of this. So. I kind of trust her judgment on on what's going on at the moment, but um, but that's by the by. Um, so there was a sense, really, that you know, and a sense of foreboding as well, the sense of um, people not really being safe anymore, people sure. not feeling that they're safe, you know, pe- so people feeling under policed and and not protected with their the, their pensions and the banks and. And there's a real sense of wanting change, I suppose, which was reflected with the Brexit, uh, of course, at vote. Right. So that's kind of where New Kings was coming from. There's another song that uh, is really powerful uh, earlier on in the album, Living in Fear, which I yeah. really like a lot. And uh, yeah. so it has a big epic ending and it builds really strong. Um, I guess that also falls along the, along the same lines there. It does fall along the same lines, although it kind of, it tries to look at the subject in a different way. I think what it's really trying to, you know, it, there's, it's kind of looking at the mindset of the perceived lack of safety that people have in their homes and their towns. Yeah. And even with terrorism, I suppose. And really trying to say, well, is this real? It's fun, funnily enough, I was listening to Radio 4 and there was a whole, there was a, there was a whole thing about this. And actually, if you look at the evidence... Britain was, you know, there was more terrorism in Britain when we had the IRA in Northern Ireland than now, you know. There were more incidents on British mainland, on the British mainland, than there are attacks on, on, on in Britain at the moment. Really? But there's a perception that there's more terrorism. Yeah, and that I mean, we're I'm not sure that, that has, the, you know, the more media and the more news that's available nowadays. I think that, that yeah, I, I think that. there's a lot to do. It has a, the, the media has a lot to answer for. <laughs> I, yeah. You know, because they, they, were, they seem to go to any length and anywhere to find all the worst, all the, all, all, you know, all the, the deaths and the worst possible news stories. That's right. And, and of course, really, all, a lot of that is really just deflecting what's really going on in your own country. You know. well, well, and we have our own things going on now with the American uh, vote for president, which is you know, oh, hard to know yes, what's we've been real watching that with, Yeah, it's hard to know what really is going on and what, what people are just supposed to be listening to. That's right. But back to more happier things uh, yeah. would be you guys coming back to the U.S., which are, I believe it's been a few years, right? Yeah, it has been a while. Um, I guess it's been five or six years. Yeah. Um. Sounds that can't be made. We must have. Yeah, we, did we tour with sounds that can't be made? We still, we toured before it, didn't we? With Power, we only played Power and Lucky Man, I think, on the last US tour. Oh, we love America. I mean, we love touring America, and you know, we've got some great fans in America. We've got some great um, memories of touring in America, and um, yeah, looking forward to it. It's going to be great, and we're going to 
you know, come over with the um, the full. We're going to do two or three songs from the album. Um, we're definitely going to do the New Kings, which we've been kind of featuring so far, right. and probably El Dorado. That is on the cards. However, we haven't yet got round to rehearsing for that, so um, that could change. But at the moment, it looks like we're going to be doing um, El Dorado and New Kings. I wanted to ask you about a few other albums you've been involved in. Sure. Some transatlantic stuff. So some of the more um, celebrated, I guess would be the word, albums of Marillion's more recent uh, you know, catalog are, I think, yeah. Brave and Marbles seem to be the ones that, that always yeah. seem to, to come up. You know, let's going back to Brave, uh, that was sort of a return to uh, Prague concept albums for you guys, I think, at that it time. Was. Uh, you know, what do you remember about that album and choosing to make that record that way uh, at that time? Uh, we'd, we'd just done um, Holidays in Eden, and, and I suppose the adverse effect of being pushed into being probably a little bit more commercial than we really wanted uh, by our record company right. um, made us um, made us go into wanting to do Brave. Now, interestingly enough, Brave was supposed to be. We had this. We were, the, the record company gave us a new A and R guy who I, I shall remain nameless because <laughs> it's not fair to the poor chap. Um, and he came along and he said, look, what, what you guys need to do is to make a quick, sharp, surefire album and, you know, get back to basics. We'll just record it really basically. Um, and we said, right, OK, yeah, you know, record it in two or three, you know, a couple of weeks tops in a studio. And we we're thinking this guy doesn't know anything about us, does he? <laughs> so um, we were sat, we, we sat back and. And then he gave us a list of producers that we could work with. And one name on the list um, jumped out at us because we'd worked with him before was Dave Megan. Now, Dave Megan was, um, was an engineer when we, when we first met him. He used to engineer at Psalm, which was Trevor Horn's studio. And um, he was a fabulous engineer. And so we, set, we, we picked him. And the plan was to go to... A, fra a chateau in France and record the album really kind of quite cheaply on, on the, uh, the, the modern portable equipment of the day which was DA88s so we held up in this chateau we'd already written a lot of the songs um, a lot of the album had been written and Dave had been involved in some of the, some of the kind of arranging side of it mm -hmm. so we went to France and we came back from France after six weeks with the drums and they were fabulous drum tracks but that's what we came back with <laughs> and that's kind of what we were expecting to come back with because we knew Dave and we knew how methodical and how good you know he's got a great pair of great pair of ears and, and fantastic judgment and he's a very very musical guy and we just knew that we were in safe hands with him so we came back and of course there was all kinds of dilemma uh, because of what had happened and we ended up in Liverpool in um, a studio called Par Street Studios. And we spent most of the rest of the year recording Brave. And we were very lucky because the head of the, the, head of the uh, label at the time was kind of quite a fan of the band. So he sort of signed off all of the stuff that needed signing off for us to be able to achieve that and, and make that album. And I think that was probably the last time a record company just put faith in a band and said, OK, well, carry on and do what you're doing. You obviously have a plan. Let us let let us listen to it at the end, you know. And that was lovely that they did that, actually. But um, uh, there was a lot of scratching of heads as, uh, of when they sat down to listen to it at the end. I think they were wondering what on earth they were going to do with it and right. how they were going to get the play back. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it, it seemed to work out. Um, so, well, it did, yeah, because, yeah. Um, I mean, from a fan's point of view, it um it was a great album because it it it, it kind of restored their faith in what Marillion was you know, which is nice, and um and yeah it was a concept album and I think it was the first concept album for quite a long time actually, yeah. musically and interestingly enough, um, Radiohead um, were were label mates, 
and um, and I remember that um, they were quite interested in in what we'd done with Brave, and 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 how we'd gone about it. Um, and they, I think they were all kind of very interested in 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 um, in, in what had happened there, and their their um their follow up album to to the Benz was OK Computer, which. Some would say is a prog album or a concept album or whatever. For them, it uh, is. A, yeah, it is. It's a, fab- sure. it's a fabulous album. Yeah, I should, I think. So, um, but I mean, yeah, it was. It was good to have done that. It was good to have done that. I'm not sure it was a great career move, you know. <laughs> from, but, but, um, and uh, but then the follow up album to to Brave was um, was Afraid of Sunlight, which which was quite quicker. Quite, quite a lot. It came together quite quickly because we already had quite a lot of the song ideas for that album um, left over from the Brave session because we sort of immersed ourselves in 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 the writing and then only only chose to use the songs that really worked for the concept. So, um, so it's funny that um, you know the album after was was almost the, a complete opposite of what Brave was. The other one, um, Marbles, um, yeah. which I guess features a, quite a, f- a few songs that have been uh, kept in the, the live shows and, and really powerful songs, like Invisible Man and, and things like yeah. that. So what, uh, yeah, tell me a little bit about that album, how that was different, and, and uh, I'm curious about how the, the Invisible Man song came together too. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm curious about that as well <laughs> because I sort of just, it's, it's that's one of those things that... Um, was worked around the lyrics, I think. Um, the, what we did with Marbles is what, um, you know, we, we, we typically always start an album in the same way. We always start off by thinking, right, we're going to jam and, and, and all the best ideas, you know, will we'll, we'll go towards the album. And obviously we do, a, we, we do a bit of that and then we start a range, you know, with, with, um, with Marbles, we did a bit of jamming and Dave was quite involved. I seem to remember at the beginning of the jamming, he wanted to be involved with how we were jamming and the kind of things we were jamming and the way we were doing it. And he was set as little, sometimes, you know, he, we, we, he, we would, um, we would jam through a piece of music and it would all got recorded. And then the next day he would say, okay, well, this is what you were doing yesterday. I really like this, and what I want you to do now is play it at this tempo, or play it in this key, or I want you to try and join this to that, you know. So he would sort of have, you know, start start growing building blocks out of uh, and making sense out of the, the the jams that we were doing, and some of the songs, you know, were much more traditionally written in the sense that we would take a few ideas and put them together where they obviously, you know, one idea would lead into another. Because sometimes, strangely enough, when we jam, we actually jam and a jam will morph into another idea, which is kind of connected because obviously they all came about from being in the same moment. Are you guys um, always recording at, when that is going on? Yeah, and you listen we back tend, later? yeah we do. But in those days, I think we were we were, we were recording the jams on like, discs you know metal um what are they called mini discs i think we were either using mini discs or dat tape i can't remember and we would fill those things up and it would take about three or four weeks or five weeks and sometimes and it always seemed to be round about disc seven or eight or or um or dat seven or eight where we started to get really good ideas. It's like you have to go through playing all of the shale. You know, you have to get rid of the shale before you actually get to the good ideas. You know, and um, and it's very funny that that could that happens. But um, but so Dave would get get involved fairly early on 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 the marbles sessions, and I think that was, I think there was a sense there of well, let's you know let's let's try and move this thing on if if there's a way of of doing that uh, from what i remember of invisible man there was just lots and lots of pe- bits and pieces and dave was talking about invisible man and i was thinking does he mean does he mean this bit or does he mean that bit and some of the pits 
I, I, I couldn't really get my head around it until he kind of pieced it together. And then it all started to make more sense. I think he pieced it together and then got us to kind of jam through it so that it became a more more plausible that that's what the music could do. <laughs> if, if you understand my yeah, meaning. Yeah, sure. Don't get to see you guys live often. I got to see you on the cruise recently. And, oh, yes. Yeah, sure. uh, uh, it seems like Steve almost his body gets taken over when he sings that song, you know, or something yeah. like, at, at the end where he kind of loses it. And uh, was that sort of something that came, uh, you know, as you were recording it also that, that the sort of emotion in the song or it was from performing it live a few times and, and then you went to record it that it lended itself to it. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. I think there was always going to be a sense, because there's a lot of talk about The Invisible Man. You know, while we were working on it, there was a lot of talk about the film and the book and, you know, the portrayal of it, what it was, what we were trying to get from you know, it, what Steve was trying to portray, you know. The sense, I mean, in Steve's, I guess... I guess what Steve's trying to do live is just bring a character to life. I think it's a yeah. fictitious, yeah, it, in a way, character. Part of his psych, I I think, is you know when you're when you're, you're constantly leaving people when you're when, when you're in a band, you're constantly leaving home or you're constantly leaving the people you've just met or the fans you've just been, you know, communicating with. And when and, and when you're a singer, and certainly when you're a singer like. Steve is. Steve is very um, in the moment when he's singing. He's not um, not one of these kind of cool Vegas types. He's he, he, every moment is is a sensitive moment for Steve, and that's how he sings and that's how he puts the songs across. And you know that's how you get people with tears in their eyes at the end of a song. That's right. And that that takes its toll. That does take its toll on on pe on someone when you're doing that. And I think that's that's there's a sense of getting that person in, into the character of the invisible man that he's portraying a sense of you know never quite being there you're you're there for a second but then you're not there you know right. you're there while the show's on then you have to go and you're, you're still in people's minds but you're not with them and you know the performance you know it's that it's that you, you, you can't capture them you can't keep the moment you can capture a moment but then it's gone. And there's a sense of that with, you know, bringing that to, to life, I suppose, in, a, in, 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 a, in portraying that in a person. Before we go real quick, I, I have to ask you a little bit about Transatlantic because I'm a huge, yeah, fan sure. of, huge fan of that band. I'm, uh, you know, a huge fan of Neil Morris and Portnoy. And, Didn't and we Norman. do well? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, yeah. Uh, you guys have really put out some of my favorite albums. And, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, and seeing you guys perform with John Anderson on the cruise was, was a highlight of a highlight for me, and I'm sure for everybody that was there. Bloody hell, it's a highlight for me as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, what, what's the one transatlantic album that sticks out the most for you and, and, and why? Well, I would have to say The Whirlwind because I kind of felt very involved in that. Although, actually, it was a concept of, of um, Neil's, like a lot of this stuff, I suppose, starts out as. Yeah. But um, uh, very uh, quite early on, we started using some of my themes and, and, and a fair amount of my music got put into that album, and um, which I'm very proud of. And, and I think it's a really cool album. I think it's a very... I think it's a very concise body of work. It's a very good, you know, it, 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 it's just well-rounded, I think, as a concept. Yeah. And, um, and it goes through some amazing stuff. And boy, you know, we get some, there's some music on that. There's some great themes. Neil, you know, Neil and Royner together, between the two, they contribute so well to each other's music. It's, it's just it's a, it's a lovely thing to be part of, actually. It's a lovely thing to see. When you watch some of the uh, making of uh, videos that you guys uh, do for the Transatlantic, it really seems like the amount of ideas and the speed 
with which they come is amazing. Yeah. It's like in two weeks, there's uh, four hours of music, and it's it, I know. You know how does what is it like to be in that room with all this stuff bouncing all over the place, and it, it happens so good, and it's all good. That's the amazing it thing. It's I know, all good. I know. That's what I know. That uh, that surprises. Well, it doesn't surprise me because everybody. The thing is, everybody's got great ideas. I mean, we 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 do a we do a fair amount of preparation, so everybody comes to the table with good ideas. And we've passed the ideas around beforehand. So we're all familiar with each other's stuff, you know, for want of a better word, mm -hmm. each other's possible contributions. And then kind of Mike, I suppose, is the leader of, okay, well, here's the board. This is what, yeah, okay, well, who does, you know, let's, we, so we kind of list everything and decide what it is we like, why we like it and what we want to use and where we want to use it and we kind of make a bit of a plan and then but as we're writing you know if things aren't working or things just someone someone says oh it, you know you instantly know when someone's thinking this isn't working and or constant instantly everybody but everybody in the room has at least two good ideas that yeah. they can throw into the pot so it's just ridiculous it is ridiculous, <laughs> and it's fast and furious, and you, you have to be on top of your game. I certainly do. Right. And um, but it's great. I mean, it's I'm I'm a, I'm surprised I find time to eat as much as I do. Actually, I <laughs> always seem to be, uh, you know, snacking on something, which is great because we record at Neil's place. We did for the whirlwind. We recorded down at Neil's house, and um, the, the hospitality is tremendous. It's really really good, and it's a nice vibe and. You know, it's a nice, quiet place. And I quite often, I like to stay at, at, with Neil because um, it's a nice kind of family vibe and, you know, it's nice and quiet. And you can just think about, you know, music, which is lovely, which is um, not always the case. It's not always easy to think about music. We're, most of the time, we're just businessmen these days. Right. Well, hopefully there's a new album uh, at some point. For yeah, we're going to be talking about that soon, actually. Very I think cool. we're going to be talking about about a new album awesome well pete thank you so much i'm sorry to take up so much of your time but this was really fun i really enjoyed uh, speaking with you yeah roy it's been a pleasure all right man are I'll you going to catch us just on tour next year uh sometimes i find my way around to to see something so we'll see okay yeah <laughs> we'll see if we can make it work again thank you so much man good luck with the new album good luck pleasure. with the, the u.s tour and everything i'm a big fan i appreciate it thank you take care roy all right man bye bye thanks to pete for the interview for upcoming news and interviews, please check theprogreport.com, follow us on Facebook, at The Prog Report on Twitter, or download the podcast on iTunes. Thanks.